नेक्स्ट एस स्केप्टिसिज्म दिस इज द थर्ड प्रोफेशनल स्केल्स ऑफ एफएम एडवांस फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट स्केप्टिसिज्म स्केप्टिसिज्म इज यू शुड हैव अ क्वेश्चनिंग माइंडसेट यू शुड नॉट एक्सेप्ट एनीथिंग ऑन द फेस ऑफ इट यू शुड आस्क द रीजन व्हाई यू शुड चैलेंज विद द अजम्पशंस if examiner is saying that project will grow with a growth of 10% why how is it possible that it will grow with a growth of 10% so if you challenge the assumption if you are not accepting on the face of it everything that is skepticism taking a questioning evidence seeking approach you challenge assumptions director statement or any given facts in the question you should ask for the reasons look for contradictions and then use reason to support your challenge and recommendation it is not neg negativity it is discipline doubt applied to the scenario you should have a questioning mindset if for example it is examiner is saying that come country is growing with the gdp of 3% but your project will grow with a growth of 10% how this is possible you should challenge this assumption for example if examiner is saying that vac is 10% and nothing is given only given vac is 10% you should challenge this assumption how this is possible that vac is 10% whether the management has considered all the risk all the relevant factors in uh, concluding that vac is 10% remember skepticism is easy compared to all other skills and skepticism can be will be tested in question number 1 2 and 3 so how to show the skepticism identify the claim or assumption explain your concern propose an alternative if possible it is not required it is if possible discuss the impact and conclude for example if if it is written in the question that uh, project will grow with a growth of 5% for the foreseeable future terminal growth is 5% you will challenge your assumption challenge this assumption you will say that um, growing with a growth of 5% is not practically viable because it is more than the gdp growth company should consider lower growth or company should make different scenarios of growth and obviously if you consider lower growth your valuation will go down so identify the assumption which you will challenge explain the concern challenge that assumption you can show the alternative and discuss the impact and conclude that's how you will get this mark super easy vac is given 10% you will write that there is no explanation explanation given that how vac is given how vac 10% back of 10% has been calculated whether company has considered the proper business risk and financial risk okay and if by considering business risk and financial risk if vac increases it will reduce the npv or it will reduce the uh, valuation show your concern so marker wants questioning reasoning implication advice not the generic theory i repeat no generic theory identify the assumption which you are going to challenge challenge that assumption you can you can write your alternative and then you can conclude in 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 two to three lines that's it for example there is a valuation question and it is given that company will achieve 27 million just a random number 27 million synergy from year 1 you can challenge this assumption that 27 million synergy from year 1 it just been a first year of the companies in in first years company will hardly connect with each other so it is difficult to achieve that much synergy in the first year yes company will achieve that synergy but from year 2 to 3 or 4 year onwards you can challenge this assumption for example uh and you are doing uh risk question and you are uh concluding that 
or maybe examiner is concluding that uh, if we should use the future because future contracts are better than the others. You can challenge that and in future, although it is better, but uh, it has other implications. It, it includes basis risk. It includes the maturity mismatch. And you should give the um, alternative uh, suggestion like over the counter company should do the forward contracts, OTC contract. For example, you are solving investor appraisal question and you are, uh, there's a proxy company given and you are ungearing the proxy company and regearing with your, uh, uh, with your capital structure. So you can challenge this assumption that only one competitor is given and that only one competitor may not be the best competitor. So company should provide three to four competitors. You should ungear all those competitors. You should take the average beta and then you can regear it. It is highly impossible that the one other company is exactly similar to your company. You can challenge this assumption. So proxy company may not be exactly similar to your company. You can challenge this assumption. This is skepticism. And maybe in the question it is given that a company will grow with a growth of 6%, 5% for the terminal value for the foreseeable future. You can challenge this assumption. For example, it is given in the question that uh, the current replacement capex is exactly equal to the depreciation. Remember, it's a very common assumption in merger and acquisition. You can challenge this assumption that depreciation is on the old asset. Current replacement capex is the new capex on in in today's world in in today's price. Depreciation is applicable on the old capex which you have done two years ago, three years ago, four years ago. Replacement capex you will do today. And you are assuming both will be equal. In today's time, replacement capex prices may have gone up. So it is not practically possible that depreciation is exactly equal to the replacement capex. For example, you have acquired asset five years ago and you are claiming depreciation on that for 10 years. And now you're assuming that whatever the depreciation in this year will be equal to, will be exactly equal to the replacement capex. This assumption has one flaw. Depreciation is based on the previous year's prices. Current replacement capex you will do today. And today capex prices may have gone up. So, there's a mismatch. You can challenge this assumption. It's a very common assumption. In merger and acquisition, you can always write that whenever one company is acquiring the other company, there will be a acquisition cost. You have to hire the lawyer. You have to hire the investment banks. You have to incur acquisition, significant acquisition cost. Company has not considered that. You can challenge this assumption. You can write this assumption. So, in short, you can challenge all the assumptions, you can challenge all the missing information, that's how you will get the skepticism marks. Checklist, have I challenged at least two to three assumptions? Did I state why they are questionable and what to check instead? Did I conclude with actionable advice? To score the skepticism, don't just compute you have to critically discuss assumptions. Identify the shaky assumptions, explain, provide the evidence, adjust, quantify, conclude. That flow hits exactly what ACCA defines as skepticism and what the examiner says most candidates miss. In short, in short, if you forget about anything, challenge at least two to three assumption in question. And if it is not making sense, if it is, if the information is not provided full, you have to challenge the assumption. And believe me, if you challenge the assumption, uh, you will get two to three marks based on skepticism.
professional skill marks are key for the success in AFM. 20 marks are there, 20. Okay, 5 marks in question number 2 and 3, 5 and 5 and 10 marks in question number 1. In every question, challenge all the assumptions. You will get 2 to 3 marks in every question. Discuss the commercial implication, you will get the professional equipment marks. Discuss the financial result, you will get the uh, professional marks on evaluation analysis and make a proper report, you will get marks on communication in question number one. That's how you will score the full marks.